Wet. Everything is wet. Wet, wet, wet. But at least we got a lot of birds, as you can hear. We got a lot of wind. And we got coffee, so. Let's get the show on the road. Perfect, zeroed at 25 yards. I'm gonna shoot some pellets today. The 18 grain barracudas. Very excited to get this gun out here to see what it can do. What a beauty. What a beauty. First one down. Perfect little headshot looks like it. Now the one thing that I like the most about this gun, right off the bat, is it's super, super light to carry around. As it is one-handed, no strain, no fuss, it is one of the best carrying guns on the farm that I've ever used. <laughs> you know, what an awesome shot. Going for the right side. <laughs> Could have corner hold that last one. <laughs> Two down. Splash into the water. Looks like a neck or head shot there. Oh, ho. what a beaut! That looks like another head shot. 85 yards. Impressive for a small barrel like this. Little bit of an offhand shot there. This is the FX Panthera Hunter and it is the compact version of it. First of all at the back I've got a foldable buttstock here which I can uh, loosen like that and fold up. Then the gun is nice and short and compact. You can just click it back. You can move obviously your AR buttstock like the way you want it. Uh, in the front I have a 580cc bottle here. The compact version really comes out with a smaller 300cc bottle which makes it even a little bit lighter. Inside here I've, I think it is a 300mm barrel. Uh, I am shooting the 18 grain Barracudas today at uh, 905 feet per second. Uh, my tune for today is very simple. I've got it at uh, 22 on the macro and I've got it at 3.5 at the micro and that gives me pretty much my speed. Uh, rec pressure here at the moment is a hundred and thirty five bar more or less almost I will say almost 140 bar, but run about there About three and a half maybe four magazines out of one full um, Obviously with a 300 cc bottle the smaller one you're gonna get less with this kind of tune on the top I've got the element helix HDLR is a 2 to 16 by 50 Perfect for this kind of gun setup and also a very nice vomiting scope if you want to put it onto a center fire like a 2250. 
Um, in the front, I've got a Donny FL Tanto, which keeps this gun ultimate, ultimate quiet, like whisper quiet. Some pigeons over there. So let's take them down quickly. Let's go. There's two pigeons there. I'm gonna go for the back one. Because the front one keeps on dipping behind the tires, so let's see. <laughs> and what a perfect shot. Awesome. Love it. Dead, dead, dead. What makes this gun awesome? Great offhand shooter, super light, easy to control, short. And a 10x on this helix scope makes it perfect for offhand shooting like that. Let's carry on. Got him down. Another one. So that's two down at 82 yards. Now that's the benefit of having a good silencer like this, Donny Eiffel Tanto. It makes that follow up shot happen. Two down, perfect. Well, most of you do know Kevin that shoots with me. You've seen him many, many times on this channel. And he is the one that supplies all the coffee for me and him. We're a bit of coffee headaches. So, yeah, a nice fresh cup of joe for us. And it's uh, gonna be nice and hot. It's winter time now in South Africa, so most of the time, winter, uh, all the birds come to the farms and that's pretty much where they get all their food and, and shelter and stuff from. Um, so, like I said, target enriched environment for us. But first, before we go, a nice cup of hot joe. couple down there as you guys can see the first couple were shot placement was perfect nicely in the chest so they dropped straight to the floor uh, but the last two or three I managed to nick them it looks like it's the neck area and this is the difference between a pellet and a slug you know the slug is more forgiving if you hit him there that concussion still kills him so he goes to the ground those ones unfortunately with a pellet it's just a nick and they fly off you know so uh, big difference but I mean as you guys can see, this gun is super accurate. <laughs> ah, this little 18 grain pellets, they hit hard. 
There's another one over there. Let's see if we can knock that one down as well. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Beautiful sequence there. Three down. <laughs> A little owl sparrow. So, so accurate. FX is stepping it up a notch and they came out with another FX True Ballistic Radar and I've got it right over here and I want to show you guys this today so let's just open it up quickly here and see what we got inside there you go just want to close it up there is a bit of rain falling this is the unit over here very very nice uh, much smaller than a lab radar as you can see um, as you guys can see also in the front it says True Ballistics uh, Chronograph and how this basically works is this is the base and inside the base is the chronograph section you press it out from the bottom like that well let's try it again there we go pops out now you will see that's the face of the, the radar and that's where you will see all your readings and this side over here which has nothing on it that's the part that will basically face forward and that's the part that's going to pick up the projectile you're shooting first of all take your base and just stick your uh, display side in like that there's a little half uh, or quarter inch by 20 UNF little screw at the bottom there you go and now you have a radar all right so let's run through this chronograph system here quickly for you uh, first of all to turn it on you have a power button here at the bottom you press it once and will turn on your unit um, it's got four little buttons here on the sides which you can use to operate the system I'm gonna go to the left top corner here that says configuration you press it and it will come up to this menu on the top you have your velocity range if you select it you will see you can shoot anything between 400 and 4,000 feet per second which makes this an awesome unit for basically air guns and center fires um, so I'm just gonna press select there um, if we go down, you will see primary unit. Um, there you can set basically your feet per second, meter per second. You can set for joules or foot pounds. 
Um, I'm just going to leave it at foot, feet per second for now. Um, we go down to the next one. It says second unit. Uh, it's again feet per second, meets per second, joules and foot pounds. Going to leave it at foot, uh, feet per second there. Go another one down. Weight unit. This is basically where you're going to select if you're going to give the information in grain or in gram. That's the weight of the projectile which you're going to shoot. I like to keep mine in grain, so I'm going to just leave it over there. We move one more down. We have distant units. Now, this is basically in the measurement that you're going to take your distances in, either yards or meters. I like to do yards and meters, but I'm going to leave it in yards for you guys. Uh, I'm going to leave that selected. We go down again. Then we have your distance. Distance one, two, three, and four. Uh, this is basically in the sections that you're going to set the radar to uh, capture your velocity for you. Uh, my first distance is selected at 25. My uh, second distance is at 50. My third one is at 75. And then the fourth distance is at 100. Now, at all four of those distances, it will give me a reading in velocity. And then the radar takes that velocity reading and it, it basically calculates a, uh, a ballistic uh, drag profile for you. So I'm just going to select that. Let's go down one more time and go to projectile weight. Here you can basically put in what kind of weight projectile you're shooting. I've got mine set to 34 grains because I'm shooting 34 grain slugs usually out of my Panthera or PRS. Just going to put that in selection there. Then go down again. Barrel offset. Uh, basically this is just the distance away from the radar. Uh, 8 inches away from the radar is basically a good distance to keep your gun uh, from this radar. Uh, just going to press select there. Then you go to channel. Uh, that is just basically the frequency of the channel it's on at the moment. I'm not going to mess around with that. Um, shutdown time. If you leave the unit on, after 240 seconds from now, this unit will automatically turn itself off. Which is quite nice because it will save your battery life as well. Now, talking about battery, this unit has a lithium battery in it. And it will actually give you a lot of time of usage time on it. I've charged this unit once and I've used it about 4 or 5 days straight now. And I've used it quite a lot. Um, so you can actually you can actually set the shutdown time over here. I'm going to leave mine at 240 seconds for now. Then the drag model, you've got a G1 and a G7 uh, drag model that you can select here. That's basically the kind of uh, ballistic reading drag model that you want when the chronograph um, calculates it for you. I leave mine at G1. That's the most standard setup for now. So let's leave it at that. Then Bluetooth. Um, you can set that for off and on, off and on, because you can connect this unit basically to your phone. And the phone has an app as well, the True Ballistics app. And on that app, you can do a lot more with this radar as it sits over here. I don't have the app connected at the moment. I'm just using it as is. So I'm going to leave it off for now. Now let's just go down one more time. Interference. Um, there's an indicator, interference indicator that you can turn on and off. It will show you on the side here if there's any interference that the radar picks up. It's a little graph that sits on the right hand side here of the screen. It will show you if there's any interference in front of the radar. I'm going to leave just mine off because I always make sure when I shoot that there is nothing in front of me. It's nice. It's open. It's clear. You don't want anything anyway in the front of your muzzle. Uh, you want to shoot safe as well. So that's not a problem. Let's go down. Um, here you can set exit without saving, meaning if I've changed anything in the menu here, um, if I press that button, it's just going to exit and it's not going to save anything. But I want this to be saved, so I'm going to select save here in the top, and that's it. Now, we're going to go out there, do a couple of shots, and I just want to quickly show you how the system works. Two. Three. Four. Five. All right, so now I want to show you guys something here quickly. Just before the rain is going to take everything away. So what I do is now I press next. Now I can see my foot pound reading here on the right hand side. It gives me the stats on my foot pounds. If I press next again, this is the most important part for me on this radar, the stats. Um, it shows me the amount of shots. That's five. I have a low of 999. I have a high of 1005. 
I've got a standard deviation of 2.23, I've got a spread of 6, and here is the best part of all. It calculates now for me what the BC reading is in average, meaning it gives me my average BC reading. I've got 0.132, so now I know I take that average BC reading, I put it into my Kestrel or into my ballistic app, and now I can shoot and know exactly how much I need to dial. That is the plus side with this unit. With the old lab radar, I used to take all the velocities, I had to take it to a different software program and calculate it over there. But with this unit, it does it all, and that is why I absolutely love it. Well guys, I'm back here at the farmhouse, and uh, I'm finding a little bit of shelter now quickly, because it's really, really bucketing down now. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go out there and do any hunting further today. I really wanted to because I'm really enjoying this gun. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed at least the episode that I've put out there for you today. And if you did, do me a big favor. Go down there, go smash that like button for me. And for all the new guys, if you want to see more content like this, please remember to subscribe. It will help me out quite a lot. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Cheers.